welcome to the special women's day uh, interview series for news nine my name is devi nadat and i run first edition arts a performing arts company in mumbai and i'm happy to be conversing with the wonderful carnatic vocalist brinda manikavasko hi brinda hi devi na really happy to be here with you today yes so brinda um, i wanted to begin by asking you to tell us about your early uh, you know initiation into carnatic music and especially how you know your family connection with music and how that can you just take us to that sure um so um my grandfather my tata uh, his name is uh, subhaya bhagwatar he is a vilipata artist uh, a traditional uh, art form from uh, you know predominantly in southern india and um, so that's the music that we uh, had in our family and uh, my father took an interest to uh, carnatic music and uh, so he he started he put me in uh, carnatic music classes so that's how it all began he's absolutely crazy about uh, carnatic music and he's a, he's a great rasika and so that's how it began and then around uh, my 8th to 9th grade uh, 9th standard that's when i developed a very uh, very deep uh, serious passion for music uh, around that time uh, so it became much more personal around that time for me and uh, our family all of us we were in dubai uh, at that time and i've had a lot of wonderful teachers over there in dubai um then it kept there was no uh, continuous training under one guru for a long time because you know uh, uh, there was a lot of shifting around a lot of things were happening there um so then eventually we decided that you know to take this up a little more seriously my mother and i we came to chennai first and uh, the rest of the family was there and say in 3 4 years time they also shifted uh, to india and here i uh, again i continue my uh, i had some wonderful gurus here also um dr manjula shriram nevil santana gopalan sir and uh, presently i'm learning from uh, subhana varadachari mami uh, it's been over uh, 10 years right now so uh, yes after coming to india uh, ch- coming to chennai was uh, definitely a game changer uh, whether it, the, the exposure to music over here is so much more different from uh, how it was how the music scene uh, was in dubai so it was wonderful it was great great learning experience and in uh, in a very short span of time w- what i felt about music just completely changed uh, after coming uh, to chennai so um, yeah so that's pretty much how it, it has been and uh, right. yeah right so what was it that changed and also going back to your your initial years how intense is learning process i mean for a classical musician it's a pretty rigorous uh, yes. art form and it is very demanding definitely but if you can tell us how how intense was the learning process and how did you balance your other uh, activities uh, okay. so in um, in dubai like we in our uh, the indian community in dubai was very active with a uh, lot of music classes dance classes a lot of uh, uh, associations were there there would be programs all the time um and we would also have of course artists come from india uh, to perform uh, monthly programs and all that was there but i still felt like after i came to chennai i felt like the, the exposure to music over here how uh, music is perceived over here for someone who's learning music the whether it is through i don't know competitions or whether it is just the learning process itself it is very very different uh, it is i would say uh how the, the 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 depth of understanding of what a certain concept is or how uh, a certain the, the learning process is it it slightly uh, it it changes and uh, so there is this kind of seriousness that that happens uh, when uh, when this there's a huge community of some amazing very senior uh, vidwan sudushis all uh, over here and you're in their presence it it makes a very big uh, difference i feel so that is one one big change that i felt felt after moving from dubai to here you know in their very presence you are always surrounded by them there is always uh, there are all these discussions we, we we keep listening to their concerts that that exposure that that was something that i definitely uh, missed in dubai so here that it it, it, it was it was very different the, the environment itself was uh, you know very different one over here and uh, right. definitely like you said very very rigorous training over here very 
um, the the details that were looked at when you when you when you performed in a in a concert or in a competition and it was very different from how it was uh, back in dubai right right yeah so you mean your family actually moved from dubai because they felt that you needed that shift to chennai to give your music a definitely yes definitely and i i owe all that that's it's it's a it's a life altering decision and i'm sure it, it's not an easy decision and uh, there's a lot of sacrifice a lot of a uh, lot of things that have uh, gone into that and uh, i'm i'm forever grateful uh, to them for having made that call right so tell me parallelly how did your education also you know proceed along with music and uh, how did you manage time and commitment to both right um so um uh i i uh, i joined the uh, engineering right after my uh, 12th standard uh, in ishwari engineering college sr ishwari engineering uh, i took up it and that was still when i was of course very very passionate about music and very serious about music but i hadn't yet made up my mind whether i wanted to take it up as a as a full time uh, you know uh, so i was still you know going back and forth about that so i would go to classes my evening classes with sugna mami uh, and morning would be college and uh, it it was it was tough but then i uh, my mom was actually the biggest driving force in you know teaching uh not directly teaching but indirectly uh, teaching us how uh, we need to multitask all these things if if we, if you really want to do all these things then you've got to figure out a way to do them because there is a way to do them is what you know she would always say so uh i think we i i i tried my best i uh, you know to do uh, college work and uh, music at the same time and uh, after finishing my uh, it i did uh, uh, my masters in uh, biostatistics in uh, the us so that was one, one and a half year course in uh, georgetown university uh, and i finished that and i came back here and uh, i worked briefly for around a year uh, as a biostatistician for uh, mv diabetes research center and that's when i it was getting a lot tougher for me i couldn't you know uh, it, it was getting too demanding both ends were getting too um uh, and then i had to make the call and i i was sure that you know i'm going to take up music uh, full time so that that's how it went yeah so how long has it been since you decided that music was going to be your so this is uh, yeah as profession uh, that i made the decision in 2012 right so yeah. 10 years yeah yeah and and how how would you review the way your career has progressed since then i um, think it's been wonderful what do I, you think uh, i think i think it's been great to uh, in the initial stages it was very scary because uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, set very sure things that uh, i i let go uh, in order to take this uh, profession and a lot of family friends uh, a lot of relatives said that that may not have been the best uh, decision because i'm letting go of something that's very concrete and you know there's there's nothing that can go wrong with that but this is this is like so uh, you know so, so many things are unknown uh, but i'm really glad i chose this decision i'm not going to lie the first few years were very uh, they were tough but i'm really glad that i i took this this this, uh, this call i made this call yeah and right. it has definitely so, been great i've had uh, wonderful uh, gurus and and that that the journey with uh, music especially because of uh, great people like them great inspiration from them it has been it's been really great yes yes so you refer to the uh, and and this is what all classical musicians refer to when they talk about a career in classical music especially uh, in your age group of the great uncertainty you know i mean you have put in a lifetime of work but who knows mm. and there's absolutely no telling of how much longer it will take for you to uh, become uh, you know somebody who can live by music and yeah. even today so yeah. that brings me to a question on the classical music ecosystem in our country i mean uh, we all venerate classical music as you know a part of our uh, culture and identity but the ecosystem and the way it works it is very challenging so from the perspective of a younger musician who has a you know several decades of uh, work before you what what 
changes would you like to see in the uh, classical music ecosystem which would make musicians like yourself feel more uh, secure um so okay i i uh, although uh, music i i was i took up music uh, as a profession in uh, 2012 i was performing regularly even before that and i i can say for sure that uh, today things are changing with regards to uh, uh, transparency uh, between organizer and uh, the artist all those things are i think those things are changing so uh, i'm sure that there is we are heading towards the right direction but i would definitely like to see more changes like uh, um for example payments uh, for artists for aspiring artists you know uh, i i it, it shouldn't always be like you know okay you perform and i give you you know on, only exposure it it can't be like that it has to be there should be some uh, some standard some sort of a, uh, at least a, some some set uh, you know amount that has to be it, it needs to be made like a standard uh, this thing that has to be given for an artist who's uh, you know doing uh, the work doing the performance so when i think that for an aspiring musician uh as a young musician there are so, several things that i i several projects that i was involved in but but uh did not you know get uh monetary this thing out of it because of you know th- those were the things you know no no you're you're just young you're just beginning your career you can't expect all this mm-hmm. now you know that kind of a thing so i would i i see the changing but i would like for it to become like a more standardized thing uh yes. like an official uh thing it, it, you know that it shouldn't it, you know it shouldn't go any uh in the wrong way so that is something that i would like to see and uh, uh, again i would like i would also like to see uh, uh, you know the sharing of opportunities uh, you know despite any i don't know gender caste or any of these things without all these coming in the way i would like uh, to see many more artists uh, you know performing uh, today it's i i i can i definitely see that the number of uh, kannad uh, young aspiring musicians were taking up carnatic music as uh, as a profession it's definitely an increased number which is which is a wonderful thing so uh, it's all all the more the reason that you know it, the opportunity should be widespread uh, yes yeah yes yeah are there any specific uh, requirements i mean specific expectations from organizers and institutions who are supposed to be working to promote and you know preserve this form are there anything things specifically that they could do that the rasikas could do that the media could do to you know make the system uh, more uh, supportive um uh, like you uh, do you mean like uh, giving more opportunities do you mean on those lines or is that what you yeah like i mean i mean even i've often thought that even organizers uh, you know uh, should try and push for changes in the formats and presentation and also like you said a wider selection of musicians you know very often you find that uh, there's uh, there's a there's a certain uh, hmm. you know uh, same kind of same uh, people keep getting promoted this, this is star culture we can't hmm. deny it hmm. there is a, yeah, there yeah. Is that also so um, which may not be in the best interest of the art form uh, you know right. and uh, right. so like that i mean uh, more and also more uh, non concert kind of things i was thinking for sure you know? yeah de- definitely like, yeah that is that i would think yeah definitely yeah yeah, yeah. discussions like like lot of other ways in which uh, artists yes. can be you know engaged and you know not just like yeah. a you know concert you come sing and go that yeah. that that has to of course be happening but apart from that yeah. there should i definitely yeah. feel that there should be other kinds of yeah. uh, engagement yeah. uh, too for sure yes. right 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 because we see that with other arts i mean in in, mm. in the visual art mm. in in uh, in uh, theater for instance mm. you see a lot of that kind of uh, you know activity happening and it also right. interdisciplinary things happening mm. so uh, as a as a younger carnatic musician who has a wonderful future ahead of her what do you think of um, interdisciplinary uh, engagements in which uh, because 
my my own understanding has been experience has been that a lot of my friends who love the arts they when you ask them to come for a karnataka or hindustani concert they say oh no i won't understand anything you know so they feel obviously we have somehow made them feel that they don't know enough and mm -hmm. unless they know enough they they shouldn't be there and they feel intimidated by being so you know it's the loss is to the classical ecosystem because people who love the arts are staying away from it because they say they don't understand and maybe they feel that an effort hasn't been made to explain to them or reach out to them mm. so what do you feel about that do you think there are things that as younger musicians you could do to uh, reach out to um, your pub to your listening public to nurture them to encourage a new audience yeah for sure uh, especially in 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 today's uh, in in this time in these times where uh, there is we have the tool of uh, social media or you know uh, recording content and putting it out there you know in any platform i think mm -hmm. the through these way use, using those we can definitely uh, reach out to uh, you know different uh, people uh, different kinds of you know crowds who will probably want to experiment and try and see what they feel about this music you know uh, rather than saying no no this is this is this is only for you know only this set of people instead of instead of keeping it that way, you know yeah 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 instead of keeping it like that like you say we can create some more uh, i wouldn't say i wouldn't say awareness but you know just putting putting more uh, 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 more content out there to say that you know this is uh, This you is, might like this. Yeah, yeah you may you may like this. this. You can should try this out. Yeah, you know, kind of a yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, so yeah, I think exactly. that is something that we can definitely do. Yeah, and as uh, like you said, this can also be something that uh, organizations uh, can also you know we can all work together and uh, you know have different types of uh, performances uh, or discussions that could you know uh, think on these lines also, with keeping these uh, things in mind. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. um also coming to the uh, to the guru shishya parampara you know which many people feel is uh, at the heart of this form of music um what are your thoughts about how we can achieve a balance between where we critically look at how this system works retain what is best in it and also allow modern values progressive values more equality more mutual trust and respect uh, how how can that get done without uh, i mean your generation younger people are the ones who can drive this right is it something that you talk about with your colleagues is it something you would like yes of course uh, we talk about it a lot and in fact I've, we've spoken about this to also uh, subhana mami who uh, subhana mami is uh, when you talk to her she, she's extremely open minded she will she will she will discuss all this with you like like my friend you know uh, would uh, with me and uh, she is very clear about how uh, these things have to evolve with uh, the times and you can't mm. be stuck in this this thing and say no this is what uh, you know this is what my tradition said and i won't budge you know that kind of a thing it doesn't work you have to uh like you say it is all about striking that balance it's not about throwing this and running towards something completely uh, you know that's not the the idea so you should retain what you know what we have to retain and uh, for example the how uh, how intense our music classes are and how uh, we look at uh, our guru a certain way when we are learning those uh, when we are learning our compositions and how how we interact with her all that is uh, it is something it i will talk to my, uh, i will talk to i will talk about anything and everything in the world to subhana mami because i have the respect for her it it is because of that respect and because of that admiration and love that i'm able to have those conversations with her so and similarly she is able to have those conversations because it, it's not because of uh, a lack of respect those discussions are happening because of this uh, that respect so i think we need to realize that you know just if i'm open able to talk a certain thing to someone it doesn't mean that i immediately uh lost that uh, you know this thing for them as these these are things that we need to but i think we are these things are changing uh we need to move you know quicker and you know forward in this uh, direction uh so that 
like you said, that, that balance is, is struck. We shouldn't uh, lose track of where we're going, but we need to strike that balance because there can be very, very nurturing conversations, very uh, conversations filled with respect. Even if you, we don't agree with each other, there's there's so much that we can learn from each other. So, uh, so I, you know, I think that, yeah, we, we should, we should find that, find that balance and, uh, and we are uh, in, in that pursuit. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so you mean uh, in your classes, in your learning, uh, you are encouraged to ask questions? You are, you yes, are very much. Very much. Yes, okay. very much. We are encouraged and, to ask questions and, and uh, the questions may, may for, the first time when someone listens to it, it may sound like, oh my God, you're asking this question. It, it's going to sound like that. But it actually is not such a bad thing, you know. You you mm. you you want to address not such a big deal. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. actually not such a big deal. So uh, a lot of things like that. And Subhana Mami encourages us to you know uh, observe, reobserve, see if you've actually understood it right. See if if after two years down the line, if something feels different, you again uh, you know check check what is what all it's uh, you know it is about. We've had discussions like that. Uh, change in perspectives, all these things, we, we have to keep coming up and we have to keep constantly engaging with them. Else uh, it's going to just, you know, stay uh, in you know, this same position without having any right. forward movement. Yeah. Right. What about your lineage versus other lineages? Are you kind of, because we've all heard horror stories about how, you know, some, some gurus have this thing of, you know, you should only listen to me and you should only, our, our, uh, whatever lineage is the best okay. known for this etc etc so right. how how does that get you know are you encouraged to uh, to have a wider yeah, yeah i'm uh, in that, again I'm, I'm really blessed uh, that you know suna mami is so she she says if you see anything good anywhere and you know it's 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 you find it uh, really uh, what do you say if it's, if it's of a certain exactly. quality, it, if you find it, yeah, mm -hmm. if it appeals to you, you will, you go learn it, please, is what she'll say. Wherever it is, it can be from, it, it, there, there's no hierarchy over there. there it can be a, a, a six-year-old kid who's sung a new song and you love it. You go and ask the kid how she was taught the song. Ask the kid to teach you a song. That's the level to which mommy would say, go grab anything that's nice. You go go in search of all those good things. It's the... Uh, uh, what uh, Sudhraman right. would say. So that way she's she's very encouraging. There's a work workshop that's happening. Someone else is taking it, and uh, you know it's a special set of uh, compositions or something, something a rare something. You know she'd be like, okay, go please, all of you go attend the uh, class. Is is that's that's her approach actually. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Brinda, uh, what are your other interests? I know that you're into wildlife photography. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some photos of you trekking. Yeah. What are those? Tell us the purpose. So, uh, so actually, my husband Anand, he's uh, he's a wildlife photographer, and uh, it's I, I had not been in any of these uh, safaris or any of these jungles until uh, you know I met him, and uh, it has been it has been a wonderful I, I cannot put it in words. It's 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 a really out of the world experience, a life changing experience because when you go to the forest, it is it is. Uh, it is a seemingly quiet place from from you know the roadside. You're you're just going to start, and uh, inside there is so much happening. There is there is a hunt. There are there are deers. There are they are, they are chewing on something. There's so many things happening, and there's this raw connect that you have with nature, and it's truly magical. And it, in some sense, that's what's happening when you're singing music. Also, there is there's one connection that you're you're. You're going towards the connection. You're, you're in search of it. You're you're lost in it, and you know it takes over you. All these things are happening when you're inside the forest. Also, you're you're just um. You're, there's no one. There's you're just you know. Just, just, they're all surrounded around you. There is no uh, cage, no nothing. So it's all out in the open. You're just in the forest, and then you spot a tiger. You see a, a deer. You see. Uh, you know, it's 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 a magical experience, and of course, uh, he he captures it. I mean, uh, so he's like since he's a photographer, he's he's extremely passionate about capturing these uh, moments, and uh, I have been uh, absolutely thrilled to be a part of those uh, journeys. So I I take a few photographers, not nothing like him and all, but uh, I just enjoy that that journey is that the process is just really uh, it's really fascinating for me. It's like a recharge process, you know. It's like recharging right. your yeah. Yeah. Right. 
So, uh, what are the other projects you're working on right now? Anything so, coming up? Very interesting. Uh, I'm actually finishing up my uh, winding up my PhD right now in music. I'm doing a PhD in music, and I'm just ending. Uh, I mean, it's coming to an end right now. So, hoping to submit my thesis soon uh, in the next couple of days. Um, and apart from which, uh, there are a couple of other recordings, uh, you know, projects, uh, the usual that's going on. And of course, now concerts have slowly started uh, resuming, you know, in-person live concerts. Uh, so hopefully things return back to normal soon. Sure. Yeah. What is your thesis on, Jinda? Uh, my thesis on uh, contribution of uh, Tanjavur K. Ponya Pillai. So he's from the Tanjur Quartet family. He's uh, not the Ponya of the Quartet, but their great grandson. So uh, he's from their family and he contributed uh, actively in the uh, Tamil Say movement uh, around, which is around 1942. Like, so uh, about him and his contribution to music. So that, that's what my thesis is about. Right. So yeah. did, did working on this thesis take you to uh, discovering new positions, new material? Definitely. It, it took me to some, uh, some wonderful music and and to a time where uh, uh, the Tamil Nadu movement, uh, when it was there, I mean, I didn't, I knew about this movement, but I did not read, you know, uh, about it in, in detail. But then, since he was such a, uh, you know, one of the front runners of this, uh, you know, along with Tarnam Lechetiar, he was, you know, one of the front runners of this movement. Uh, I read a lot more about this uh, Tamil Nadu movement and how, uh, at, at that time, it was such an important, uh, you know, necessity. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was pretty fascinating. So I ran into a lot of wonderful music, and of course, how all this took place at a at a time where mu uh, Tamil music was not uh, sung that much. And then today, again, it's it's all changed. So you know how these okay. movements, how they change the uh, the path for every, everyone coming afterwards. All that it, it was fun, it was wonderful uh, learning about all right. that. Yeah. Right. So do you also listen to other forms of music? what what would you or follow other art forms i mean other forms of music and other art forms yeah uh, because I do. my experience has been yeah my experience has been that a class most classical musicians are so busy with with their primary tasks that they just don't have the time uh, and at one level it's understandable right, to, right. you know like pop in to see a movie or go to a art gallery or take mm. watch a new play Mm. How do you balance that part of your uh, existence? Uh, for me, I think uh, uh, like like what Subhana Mami says, there's there's good everywhere. Uh, so she would whether it's uh, uh, Hindustani uh, music or whether it is uh, Western music or something. Uh, I I listen to all. Uh, uh, I mean not all. Job. I mean I mean to say I listen to a lot of Western music and uh, some Hindustan music too. Uh, I want to, in fact, listen to more uh, Hindustan music. That's I'm hoping to listen to more, uh, yeah, you know, soon. Um, and I play uh, the veena at home. Uh, I, I've learned playing the veena at home, so I, I play the veena at home. And I think that there is really no no place where I can draw a line and say that no, no, I shouldn't listen beyond this, or I I shouldn't go to this side or something. You know, I want to listen to as much as I can wherever from the world it is from. So. It, because it's it's all it's all very beautiful and i want to try and see what i what i understand of it what 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 it makes me feel and all those things so i want to explore uh, as much as i can so i think it's important that we listen to uh, you know all the different kinds of music that that we can uh, i think it's important that we do yeah yes and it all comes back to your your performance and to for your sure. Doesn't for sure, for sure, definitely. You can't even you can't even exactly. I wouldn't have even realized it. Yeah, definitely will contribute. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So wonderful talking to you, Brinda. Wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much. And nice forward to your concerts. Yes, definitely. Love thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.